Welcome back. I'm Steve Chapman of Get Your Fish On. Today we're going to talk about three baits I think you should be using in the month of September. I did it last month and I'm going to do it again. We're going to break down the country in three sections, the upper, middle, and then the south. Now, some of the baits are going to be somewhat the same, but we're going to talk through some of the stuff that I think you need to start looking for because it is going to be a fall transition. To start off, we're going to start using baits that might be a little bit smaller right now because we want to target bass that are going after shad. This is a month when, in September is a month when you're going to want to use reaction baits for most of the country because all of us are going to start seeing some, some similarities, but at the same time, there's some drastic differences. This is a time when I think this is the best month of the year to fish. That's just me personally. Down here in Florida, we'll start to get a lot more rain. Uh, but when you get start getting up north in the middle and upper country, upper north of the country, the grass is going to start dying because you're going to have colder nights and really warm days, especially right now. It's been exhausting hot. But we're going to target fish early in the morning and in the afternoons because when that water gets a little bit cooler, those fish are going to come in and get shallow on you. As it warms up, they're gonna to start to find shelter. This is a time of the year, September's a time of the month, a year when fish are going to, bass are gonna school up and push fish into creek bends and in the back of bays and stuff like that. And they're gonna push those shad in and then sit outside of those areas. And as the shad or forage fish start migrating out, they're going to be there to ambush them. You're going to look for deeper areas in that, in that, you know, the V of the, the, the seafloor. But you'll want to target those fish early and, and in the evening when they're going to be a little more active. September's a month when we're going to start seeing baits that are more reaction baits. At the same time, we want to keep them the same size as the shad that they're feeding on. You don't want to throw, you will, you can catch them by the way on this. You can catch them on a giant glide, glide bait in the middle of the pond in 10 feet of water. But if you're using something that's the same size as the shad in the same, not only the same size, but the same style of bait that they're attacking, you're going to get, you're going to be more successful out there fishing. September is a month when I like to downsize, where normally I want to throw, maybe I'm throwing a 105, I'm going to downsize to a 90. I want something a little bit smaller. It doesn't cast as far, I know, but what it does do is it is the same size. So as much as I hate using the term match the hatch, use the same size baits and try to match what you're seeing out there. So if you like this kind of content and you wanna help the channel, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram. You'll see some subtle differences between what you see on YouTube and then what you see on the gram and Facebook and all those stuff. The stuff that I'm working on, I put out shorts and other stuff that you'll see a little bit before the videos I do for YouTube because they're a little bit easier. These long formatted videos take a little bit of time, but Hopefully they're helpful and hopefully you're a subscriber and you're part of the team. So hit that subscribe and like button and thank you. So if you're in the upper part of the country, the great America, US of A, my first bait I think you should be using is a middle diving crankbait. And when I say middle, I mean middle of the water. We're gonna, not, we're gonna have three styles of water here, upper, middle, lower. The middle of the column of a water column is where bass are going to be feeding a little bit more. They're going to be feeding up because the water is going to get a little bit warmer as it goes up. They want, they want to target fish and go after them. This is a month when they're really going to try to put on as much weight as possible for what's about to happen up north. It's going to get cold soon. September, October, I mean, you're, you're starting to see 70, 80 degrees finally. Down here in Florida, it's still 105. Up north, it's beautiful. You'll see smallies starting to do, you'll start seeing smallies being aggressive and your largemouth bass are also aggressive. So my first bait's gonna be a middle crankbait and one that's, you know, two or three inches. My second bait is, as much as I wanna fish that upper water column, this is for smallies only. I'm putting on a Ned Rig. I'm gonna use that Ned Rig and bounce it off the bottom, find a rock find something that will hold fish. And then I'm going to use that Ned rig and slowly work 
that bait around that area. Something that's still small, two to three inches. That Ned TRD from, from Z-Man is a great one. There's a lot of great Ned baits. I'm not a very successful Ned fisherman, but I usually, I can do it, but I make mine weedless because we have so much grass. Which brings me to another point. Grass is going to start to die out right now. So if you can find a grass patch, it's going to hold bass and also hold forage fish. If it's out in the middle of some place, that's a great ambush point for bass. Because forage fish are going to try to find the shelter around it. If there's shelter around it, it's also a place where bass are going to hold up. So number two, if you're up north, is a Ned Rig. And my third bait for upper the upper country, that's what you're going to be called here, the uppers, uh, is a, a, a hard jerk bait. Something that is uh, a twitching, suspending jerk bait, hard plastic. Something that I can get in that 6 to 10 foot water depth. Something that's not terribly big, but small, that I can either make a long cast and just burn it in, or if the water's super cold or gets cold, I'm going to make a long cast and twitch it in. This is where the good anglers go to the great anglers. Knowing the water temperature and how the fish react in that water temperature is crucial. If you're in colder water, if you had a colder, if it's colder in the morning, use that hard jerk bait and just twitch it. Twitch, twitch, pause. If the water has warmed up because you've, you're going fishing in the afternoon, use that hard jerk, jerk bait, make that cast and burn it in. You're going to get bites on those. So we talked about upper. Now we're talking about the middle of the country where I wish I was. I wish I was seeing some cooler evenings and some fall leaves and stuff like that. I miss that down here in Florida. We don't have that. But for fall to start off, my first bait for the middle of the country is going to be a topwater walking bait. I want to use something that's a topwater spro or a walking frog. Maybe not a popping one. I want to be able to make a big cast and I want to have that long erratic action. I'm not going to pause it during this time of the year either. September, I want to keep that bait moving at a good pace. I want to be able to throw it inside those backs of those canals and those bends and so forth and just work it out just like it's a shad trying to get out of that canal or that bend that's back there. A topwater bait's going to get be really successful for, for you right now. My second bait is I'm going to use a fluke. I'm going to weedless hook it and I'm going to make that cast and just let that bait fall and give it a couple rod twitches and work it not crazy fast but not dead slow. You'll see you make that cast twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch. That bait is going to be erratic and do this and then fall. A lot of times you'll get bass that are sitting below, looking upwards and see that twitch, twitch, like it's walking in the water. And then as it pause, it looks like it's a dying fish. They'll come up and strike it instantly. They're very good about sitting behind the bait too and coming up and hitting the bait from behind. So my second bait is a zoom fluke or Really, you want to note that Sixth Sense makes a great fluke too, but those two are the, the best of the best in my opinion. Moving on to the third bait I think you should be using. I think right now, if you're in the middle of the country, throw on a chatterbait. Now, I know there's all sorts of different chatterbaits. You have your Z-Man and you have your Strike King and so forth. I think Z-Man, in my opinion, makes the best chatterbaits. They're, they're, they're out there. I think that you can either use the Stealth Blade or the mini blade, the mini max or the jackhammer and catch fish. But here's my little difference for you. If you're not being successful and you have the jackhammer on, switch to something that has a different pitch. Now, most of the time you're going to get a lot of bites because that chatterbait has so much action that it just makes so much commotion in the water that they feel the bait and then they come attack it but they also hear the pitch, so it calls them in. I find that a lot of times when I'm not having a good day with the jackhammer, which I use probably 90% of the time, that I switch over to the, th the, the striking thunder cricket because it has a different pitch. There's something to be said about that. 
when water is starting to get a little bit cooler, those baits, those louder baits, are a little bit harder for bass to hear because, because sound doesn't travel as well in cold water as it does in warm water. But we're still kind of in that warmer time, but we're going to get some colder month, cooler nights. So that top water, the fluke, and a chatterbait if you're in the middle of the country are three I think you should use. Now, if you're down here, you're going to get two of the same that I said in this in the, the central part of the, the country. I think if you have a topwater walking bait, that's the first thing I would be putting on. I, right now, pretty much, I'm only using a fluke, I'll be honest with you. I'm only throwing a fluke right now. When I go to the pond, or I go to topwater Johnny Pond, or wherever I fish, I'm not fishing. I'll, I might fish a topwater in the morning, but as soon as it gets out of the morning and I'm going for 45 minutes to an hour, I'm only bringing a, a pocket full of Zoom flukes and I'm only throwing those. I'm confident with it and that is a, a big part, but I know that I'm going to get bites with a fluke right now. I know I am. That pause, that twitch, twitch pause as it as it floats down is deadly. It can get through a little bit of grass. I keep it weedless. And because September for me is a month when I'm coming out of August where I'm having, like right now I'm having no rain. And I'm hoping September I'm gonna get a lot of rain because it's a little bit more hurricane season. I want, I want to use something that I can stay in that upper water column and just fish above the grass. And that's very successful because those bass are underneath the grass. Really, if I really wanted to do something, I would throw a worm and get it to the bottom. But for me, September is really important for me to start using flukes. And then last, I think you should use a buzzbait if you're down south. I'm not very successful with buzzbaits, but I do know that they work all the time. Early in the morning, early in the afternoon, that chugging as the buzzbait is gliding over lily pads and all that other stuff is really successful. That churning spits up the water and it entices bass to eat it. They think it's a, a wounded fish that's trying to get away from them, so they will attack it. A lot of people will put trailers on their buzz baits. I'm not a person that puts a trailer on a buzz bait, only because I want a certain sound and I don't want it, I want to get that, that bait out and I want to get it on top of the water as soon as possible. So any extra weight for me grabs more grass and I don't want that. So my third bait, for the South is a buzz bait. So now you have to tell me, where are you at in the country and what three baits are you gonna use? Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. I hope you enjoy these kind of videos. I hope this helps you throughout the country. So comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to y'all soon. Good luck in September and cheers.